In today's video, I'm gonna be making a leather sheath for this dagger I just completed. If you wanna see this dagger finished, then stick around and watch the whole video. Don't skip it, because we'll be showing at some point in the video, this finished dagger. We'll get some really good close-up shots of it so you guys can see. So this needs to have a nice fancy leather sheath uh, with exotic skin inlays or overlays. I'm not sure which way we're gonna go yet. I still have to pick out my materials that I'm gonna use. And the first thing we're gonna do is jump in and get out all my leather working equipment. So I've got all my leather working tools, mostly all in this one little box right here. So we've got some barge cement, that's really important. That's gonna glue all our pieces together. We've got some edge finish, might end up using that. Protective wax finish, may or may not use that. Need some good quality string to tie it all together. And then in here, I've got a bunch of the workhorse tools I use all in this one little bag that's falling apart. Got a cool pair of leather scissors here, probably use those. Leather cutting wheel, pizza style. Uh, I've got some of these little office clamps. I like to have at least four of these for building a sheath. Might end up needing some cotton swabs. Uh, here's something I'll be using, a little piece of deer antler. Uh, we've got a, a little uh, corner cutting cutter. Here's a little uh, groove cutter. I don't know the proper terms for this stuff and I don't care the proper terms for this stuff. I know how it works and uh, I use it to my advantage. Here's a little separate -y thing that makes lines that are separated. Uh, here's something really important that we need. This is a skive or skeeve, one or the other. <laughs> this is really handy for shaving the leather down. Another little uh, cutter, a stitch marker. This is really important to have. We're gonna use a stitch marker. We're gonna need sewing needles, so I'll grab out a couple little sewing needles. My stamps here for the putting the name on the sheath. Little tiny, tiny, tiny standard screwdriver for adjusting some of these tools. The first thing we're gonna need to work on is to make a pattern for the sheet. Uh, and I'm gonna use probably an old uh, file folder out of like a filing cabinet for that is what I like to use. But we'll, we'll cut it out the general size of the sheet and then we'll use that as a pattern to cut out our leather and have a good pattern to follow as we go through the whole process. So that's the shape of the knife and the front of the guard. So now I need to add some extra material for the welt on each side of the blade. So for that, I'm probably just gonna add about a half inch. I'm gonna go down through here and just make some marks that are about a half inch out from the blade. Now we're just gonna play a game of connect the dots. Connected all the dots and now I'm gonna cut out the outside line and that's gonna be the general size and shape of our sheath. The sheath won't be quite this wide when it's finished. We're gonna lose a little bit of the width as I make the sheath and as I clean up the edges and stuff. Got my pattern ready to go and I was able to go pick out some cool exotic leathers for overlays on the sheath. So I've got this really pretty brownish stuff here. We're gonna put this up on the throat area of the, the sheath. So right up in this area, and we'll probably cut out like a, a cool shape that it'll kind of come down to a point or something right here. And it'll also wrap over the end of the sheath, I believe, and uh, go into the inside a little bit, possibly. And then for the main part of the sheath, I'm gonna use really pretty black with uh, some awesome texture on it, both of these exotic leathers. For the main framework of the sheath, I'm gonna use uh, some of this cowhide right here. This is also, this is the skived off part of the cowhide, so there's no, there's no good side on it. Both sides are rough. We don't need a good side on it because the entire sheath is gonna be covered with the exotic skins, so I can go ahead and use this for the framework. It'll make a really good, strong frame. So framework, main exterior, and then the uh, little accent pieces on the top of the sheath. Got some of our base pieces cut out, the, the main exotic leather pieces that go on the front and back. 
And then we've got our framework cowhide pieces. We want a pretty good thick layer of uh, barge cement on the leather. And then uh, after we apply it to both surfaces, you let it dry. Uh, sometimes I use a hair dryer to dry it a little faster, but we're gonna let it dry until it's tacky. And then you uh, stick the two pieces together. So the way this barge cement works is you're basically, you're kind of letting it dry and soak into the leather fibers. And then when you stick it together, you're not really sticking the, the pieces of leather together so much as you are actually just sticking the layers of barge cement together. If you try to put the pieces together with the barge cement wet, it's not a fun time. You kind of have to clamp everything down and it, it doesn't work very well. If you do it just right, you get a really strong bond. Sometimes you get a bond that's so strong that the leather act actually rips away before the barge cement lets go. If you're using the barge cement on a really smooth surface, like the good side of the leather, it doesn't stick very well at all. So you need to rough it up with the belt sander or make a bunch of little cuts in it with your knife or something to get the barge cement to stick better. So I'm gonna line it up here at the very tip. That looks good. I'm gonna put a little tension on it just to help get rid of the, uh, the weird little ruffles in the exotic leather. And then the secret to really getting this to also, another secret to getting it to stick, I know I've already mentioned multiple things, but you kind of want to, it needs an impact. If you impact it lightly, it really just sets it. So I just go over it real lightly with this little hammer. You can already see this piece is looking a lot prettier. Just having all those ruffles and stuff out of it, it's going to be a really beautiful sheet. And now it's time to make a throat piece for the front and back. So we're going to use this material here. And I'm just drawing on my uh, my pattern and I'm gonna alter my pattern so I can cut out a really nice piece out of this material to put on there and make them both the same. So I've marked out with the pattern I made right where the edge of it's going to be and now I'm going to grind this area and this area with a 120 grit belt and the reason I'm going to do that is to make it so there's a rough texture for the barge cement to stick to a little bit better, the contact cement rather. I took these patterns for the throat and tips, put them over the leather uh, front and back areas, and then used the pattern to draw these lines. And then I went right up against my lines with the belt sander, and then I used the Dremel tool with a little drum disc on it, a drum sander, and got right up on the line. That way all the leather's roughed up. I keep calling it barge cement just because that's the way I, uh, that's the way I always used to know it because I, I used to buy barge brand or something like that. It's, technically just contact cement. Got the tip and throat pieces contact cemented onto the front and back of the sheath. Ah! Next thing I wanna do is get some stitching right along here right along here on each piece. I went in and lightly, lightly cut a little tiny bit of a groove right where I want the stitching. And then I used this, uh, this little cutter here to finish out that groove all the way down to a point. And then I put a stitch marker in with some pretty close spacing. And I'm going along that, that little bit of a groove I made and following it as a guide. And I'm laying out where the stitches need to be. Then we'll take it over to the Dremel tool with a small drill bit in it and drill all these holes out. The next thing we need to do is make like Lilo and stitch up these four different places on the sheath before we can put the lining on the back. 
So I have this really high grade, uh, super strong leather sewing uh, string. I'm not sure what it's made out of, but it's coated in wax. And there's five little tiny threads. So for this delicate stitching, we're, we're just using two of those five threads. And then when I do the extra heavy duty stitching around the outside of the sheath that holds all the pieces together, there we'll use three of the five pieces and uh, give us a little bit thicker look to our threads. I finished stitching the little throat and tip areas onto the sheath and I wanted to point out something you can do to make your stitching look worlds and worlds better. So we went to all this effort to hand stitch the sheath and it looks pretty good now, but you can really clean it up and make it look beautiful by using the same stitch marker. You line the wheel up over the stitches and just run over it, applying a fair amount of pressure and it really lays the stitches down and makes them look beautifully spaced out and kind of flattens the string and just pushes it down in the leather and it looks really, really pretty. I wanna fold this leather over the end, but first we're gonna put the lining back here. But first, first, we're also going to taper this leather so that when we fold it over, it'll kind of taper down to nothing. So I wanna put a little taper on it instead of leaving it thick all the way through. And we'll go ahead and do that and then put the lining over and then fold it over. We've got these two parts tapered down. And the reason you want that tapered is so that when they're folded over and you have it inside your sheath, that it just makes everything more, uh, more streamlined and uh, less chunky. I tapered it on the back side and I left the front really nice and uh, clean. For the inside of the sheath lining, I'm gonna use this skin. It's really, really thin and pretty soft. So we're gonna go ahead and cut out some big pieces of it and then get the uh, contact cement on there and get them glued on. Cut a few strips of leather for the welt on the sheath. This is gonna be the part that the edge of the blade butts up against. It keeps, the, uh, it keeps a nice slot in the sheath for the knife to slide into, and it allows the edge to scrape against it without cutting into thread. It would scrape against the leather. We'll barge cement one piece on one side of the sheath, and then I'll fit the other piece to butt up against it.
I got the sheath put together with contact cement and then I took it over to the grinder with just a 36 grit belt and cleaned up the edges just to get all the layers even and kind of clean up the shape of the sheath. And that will lead to the next stage, which is gonna be to get this thing stitched up. So to start, I'm gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna use this, this little groove cutter and make a little tiny groove everywhere I want my stitching just so it sits below the surface or a little bit closer below the surface instead of having the stitch on top of the surface of the leather. And then once I have that, I'll use the stitch marker with a coarser wheel in it. And we'll go across and make little dots where all the stitches go. And we'll go drill out holes with the Dremel tool for each uh, stitch. We've got the stitching done all the way around and I tied a knot right here and then I sent both pieces of string through this last hole. It's something you can do to get rid of that knot so it's not showing up in your final sheath. It's just pull on the string and pull it into the leather a little bit and it disappears right in there. got it all stitched up. The next thing I want to do is get the edge rounded. I like to put quite a bit of dome on the edge because right now it's all square and that actually makes the sheath look really thick and chunky and just doesn't look very streamlined. But if you round that, that edge, the sheath will magically look a lot thinner and way more streamlined and seem a lot less chunky. So I'm going to do that with a 36 grit belt and then I'll get the edge wet and I'll either use a worn out, really fine grit belt, or I might even flip the belt around backwards and just use the, uh, the back of the belt to uh, burnish the edge of the sheath and make it really smooth. The belt sander with the worn out 320 grit belt worked really well to smooth this out. But now I want to get it a little bit smoother so I'm using this super smooth piece of white tail deer antler and some gum uh, transacanth. And I'm rubbing that onto the edge of the sheath and just doing a little bit of hand burnishing to, to really get it nice and smooth. The next day. I've let the sheath dry overnight because we don't want all that moisture trapped in the leather. Uh, the sheath is pretty much done. All we need to do is put the final uh, leather finish on it. So for this leather finish, I'm gonna use Yosheen. I'll probably use uh, two or three coats, light, light coats. And we're gonna use the airbrush to apply it because we can get a really nice, even, smooth finish uh, without getting any fuzzies or anything in it. Exciting. 
I'm gonna call this thing done. All we gotta do is let the finish dry on it and then I'll probably put one or two more coats on, but it won't get any prettier than it is now. Uh, the extra coats will just be to give a little thicker layer on the leather. Thanks so much for following along as I made this sheath and played with all these funky little tools like this little spinny pokey wheel, this razor sharp pizza cutter, this little pin shaped cutter that'll cut like strips of leather and scares my hand every time I touch it and barge cement that smells really great but probably kills brain cells. May the forge be with you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Level up your knife making with the Takedown Bowie Knife online course.